All right, so what is up, guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use retrofits to retrieve data from an API, and I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. So to get started, we are going to create this random cat facts app, and every time you tap on the screen, it will generate a new cat fact, which it has retrieved from the API, and it will also give you a timestamp of the date it was created. And as you can see, there's a nice loading symbol, and it's a very simple app, looks really good. But let's get started immediately by closing this phone screen and going straight to our file and settings, because we need to actually add a plugin in case you do not have it. We're going to have to install a plugin called JSON to Kotlin class, and you can find that in the marketplace so just type it in there and it will load and you just click on install and restart your IDE if it is necessary. But uh, once you have this, life should be a lot easier. So just get it, apply it and click OK. Then we should go to our build.gradle file as always. And inside here, we are first going to add a few compile options because I've tried this many times without it and it did not want to run without these compile options. So we need to add the compile options for source compatibility for Java version 1.8 and over here also for 1.8. So you need this. And if you want to copy this, you can just find it in my GitHub repository, which I've created. And I will leave a link in the description in case you want to just copy and play around with the project. But uh, yeah, this is necessary and we will add a few dependencies. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that in here. The first two are for coroutines and the second two are for retrofit two. So once you have inserted these dependencies, you can go ahead and click on sync now. And as soon as the sync was successful, we can actually close this Gradle script folder and open the res and go to layout and go to activity main where we can start creating our very simple layout. I'm just gonna paste in what I had earlier. All right, so the first thing I did here is change that constraint layout to a relative layout. And right immediately under, I added a progress bar with the ID of progress bar, and it has the style of ATTR slash progress bar style. Then I set the layout width and height to wrap contents, and I centered it in parent. And I also set the visibility to gone. Then I added this tools tag, which set the visibility to visible. So I could see where it was during the editing phase in the XML file, but this will not be visible during runtime. So that's why we use this tools keyword. And right below it, we have a text view with the ID of text view. I set the width and height to wrap content, and then I centered it in the parents. I gave it a margin of 20 dp with the text color of black and the text size of 20 sp. And then I used the tools again to set a sample text of sample cat fact. So you can see it in the editor, but you will not see it at runtime. And below that, I have a text view with the ID of TV underscore timestamp. Height and width are set to wrap content. The layout is going to be right below the TV underscore text view. And then it's centered in parent, so it will be perfectly centered. Then we have the text color to black, the text size to 12 SP, and the text style is set to italic with the tools text set to timestamp. And then I added another relative layout down here and I gave it an ID of layout generate new fact. And essentially it acts as an overlay which is used to respond to the tap events of the user every time they click on any part of the screen. And yeah, that's actually all I had to do for this XML file. And up next, we can go to the manifest and add the permission of internet because we need to access internet, of course. So users permission, Android permission internet and close that. And as soon as we're done adding that permission to our manifest file, we can go ahead and open our Java file where we have our package name and create a new package in here. So we're gonna type in package and we are going to name this API. And inside here, we are going to right click and enter a new Kotlin data class file from JSON. Now, the first thing we're gonna need for this is a JSON string. So we are going to go to the internet and to our API, which in my case is going to be this catfax API. So in here, you'll find a base URL, which we will copy and paste, and we will place it here. And then you'll see it has endpoints, which tell us how we can use this API. So if we click on slash fax, it will say you can use slash fax slash random to get a random fact each time you generate or each time you enter this URL. And you can also edit it and it gives you lots of samples of how to use it. So we're just gonna copy this slash fax slash random and we are going to add it to the end of the URL we just copied earlier. And as soon as we click enter, you'll see that it will generate this JSON data. And each time you enter this, it will generate a new one. So if we tap on enter again, you'll see it generated another JSON file, but we want to get the JSON data in its pure form. So we don't want it to be formatted or anything. We're just gonna get the one that has not been elaborated yet. We're gonna copy and paste that. And we are going to close this and 
paste it in here. Then you can tap on format and it will format everything very nicely. And then down here, I'm just going to type in cat JSON for the class name and we can click on generate. It'll say two Kotlin data class files have been successfully generated. And if we tap on this API, you'll see there's a status class and there's a cat JSON class. And if you double tap on this cat JSON class, you'll see that we have a lot of values that have been stored in the data class. And these are all the values that it found in the JSON string. So it makes life a lot easier. You could also manually type this all in, but I definitely think it was much easier just to use this JSON to Kotlin class converter. But once we have all of that, we can go ahead and create an interface. So we're gonna go click on new Kotlin class. And in here we will type in interface and write API requests. And the first thing we want to do in here is create a at get request. So we do at get from retrofit and make sure it imports the retrofit too. And we want to insert a value. And for our case, if we go back to the internet, you'll see that there's this slash fax slash random request. So if we just copy and paste that and enter it in here, it will create that request. And right under, we want to create a function called get cat fax. And that's gonna make a call to our cat JSON file. And then we also want to import the call. So we'll go ahead and tap on imports. And you wanna make sure that it is this retrofit2 call because otherwise it won't work. And that's actually all we had to do in our interface. Now we can go straight ahead to our main activity file. So the first thing we're gonna do in here is create a constant and this is gonna be constant val base underscore URL. And that's going to equal the base URL from the API we're taking it from. So we're gonna take this one right here and insert it right in there. Then inside the class, we can create a tag. So we're gonna do private var tag. And we're going to equal that to the string of main activity for the purposes of debugging later. Then inside our onCreate method, we are going to add a function called getCurrentData. And this is going to be the API request. And right under that, we're going to get our layout, the relative layout we created earlier in our activity main. We layout generate new facts and we're going to set an on click listener. And inside here, we're going to just copy and paste the previous function we just created. And what's going to happen here is it's going to load the data immediately when you start the app. And every time the user wants to get new data, they will tap on the screen and it will generate some new data with this function here. And right under, we can actually get started with creating the actual function. So we'll do private function get current data. And the first thing we want to do in here is create a value of API, and that's going to equal a retrofit dot builder. And the base URL is going to be our base URL that we have defined at the top as a constant. Then we are going to add a converter factory, which is going to take a JSON converter factory, and we will create one there. And then we're going to call build. And finally, we are going to want to call create and insert our API requests class.java. And in this example, we're gonna be using coroutines to make this a lot more simple. So let's get started immediately by typing in global scope dot launch. And we are going to dispatch it on dispatches.io because it is data and this is the dispatcher that puts it on a thread for managing data. And inside here, we're going to create a response. So we're gonna do response and that's going to equal our API that we just created above and it's gonna take our get fax function from, from the API requests interface and it's going to await for the response. And down here, we're gonna write if response is successful, we will get the data, so we'll do value data and that's going to equal our response.body and then we will just log it. We will insert the tag and then we'll write data.text and it wanted this to be asserted as non-null, so just remember to make sure this is not null. So the next thing to do is actually just to update the text views and to make the progress bar disappear and appear when we are loading it. So continuing within this if block, we are going to write with context and it's gonna take our dispatches dot main to update the UI. And then inside here, we can actually change a lot of parameters. So the first thing we want to do is change the visibility of the text views. So we're going to do tv underscore text view dot visibility equals view dot visible. And we're going to do the same thing for the timestamp. So tv underscore time dot visibility equals view dot visible. And finally, we want to set the progress bar to invisible when the text views are visible. So you don't have overlapping views. So progress bar dot visibility equals view dot gone. And we also want to change the text, of course. So we're gonna write tv underscore text view dot text. And we're going to assign the data dot text 
that we have retrieved from our API request to it. And now we're going to do the same thing for the timestamp. So TV timestamp dot text equals data dot created at. So this will update the text view with the cat fact, and this will update the timestamp with the date it was created at. But we also have to copy these visibility modifiers and paste them at the top of the get current data function. And here we're just going to reverse everything. So we're going to say invisible, invisible, and we want the progress bar to be visible. So this is before the app makes the request, it will show a progress bar which shows that it's trying to make the request, that it's loading. And as soon as it has successfully made the request, it will update the view and get rid of the progress bar. So it looks like the progress bar is not loading anymore. And we can actually run our app right now and you'll see that it will work. But there are still a few exceptions that we should handle before we continue with this. And as you can see there, it makes the loading screen, it retrieves the data and it posts it to the text view. And every time we actually tap on this screen, it will generate a new cat fact with a timestamp at the bottom. And it's just really nice. It's very easy to make. It simplifies life by a lot. But there's still an error that you will encounter probably many times. And that is if there's no internet or the connection's bad and it fails to get the API, it will crash. So let me just simulate that by changing my phone to airplane mode. Now, if we tap on that, it will crash the program. And we should get a log down here that says you messed up. So the way we're going to fix this is by going inside our global scope IO and adding a try catch block. So first we're going to get this try. We're going to get rid of that. And we're going to go down here. And then we're going to add the catch, which is going to take this exception as a parameter. We are going to format that so it looks a bit nicer. And in here, we will handle the exception by creating a toast message that said something went wrong in the app. So we will write, I mean, we have to copy first this with context because we are still in this coroutine. And we'll do with context dispatches dot main so we can update our views. I will create a toast that takes application context as the context. And it will say, seems like something went wrong and this will be displayed if anything goes wrong with our api and let's just try to play that app once again so let's open our phone screen and click on play and as you can see there we have an infinite loop and a toast message that says something went wrong so the user is notified that the app is not working correctly but uh, otherwise let's reactivate airplane mode and preferably you would want to add a function that checks every 10 or 15 seconds whether the app has internet again, so then it will automatically load the data. But in our case, we have to tap on the screen and it will make the request. But yeah, that's all I wanted to show you in this very simple retrofit tutorial. In a future video, I'll show you how to use retrofit to get a list of objects or an array of objects. And essentially that can mean a list of users, a list of news articles, and we will continue developing really neat and efficient apps for Android. But uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in another video.